Hey everybody, it's Aaron. Welcome to 7 Minute Stories. Season 5 will begin this September, but for now, every Thursday, we're bringing you the best of Season 1. These are stories that you don't want to miss. Now, if you're a listener of this podcast, please, if you haven't already done so, make sure and tap the five-star rating and leave a review wherever you're hearing this. I know everyone in this space says this. Here's why I'm asking you to do it if you haven't. All of our growth on this show has been organic. It's because of you. And all of these stories that so many have heard are commercial-free. Please help keep it that way forever by making it easier for others to discover the show in their podcast apps. And that happens when you tap five stars and say something nice about the show. Lastly, there's a link in the episode description for our quarterly newsletter. You'll want to sign up for that because you'll get behind the scenes stories and a special episode on a private podcast feed that's only available to our newsletter subscribers. All right. Enjoy this week's story and I'll talk to you soon. It was 2016, and the Cleveland Cavaliers had just won the NBA championship. I had celebrated in the streets of Cleveland, and my life was nearly complete. But I was getting into my 30s, and I was worried about getting out of shape. I remember my father had snapped his Achilles tendon. He was a star soccer player and even played professionally. But he had an alumni game that he went back to his university, his former university for, And I remember as a kid watching him play. I was on a blanket in the grass watching my hero play soccer, and he just turned the wrong way. I don't think he was in in the type of shape he should have been, and he snapped his Achilles tendon. And I remember how much it affected him, how scared I was when I saw him hurt. And so I wanted to make sure I was in shape as I got into my 30s. And so what better time, especially with the Cavs winning a championship? I mean, who knows? Maybe they would have a roster spot open for me. I would practice basketball. Now, in previous seven minute stories, I talked about that I never made the junior high team, but in college, I played rec ball and I was pretty decent. But every time I tried to get back into shape at any point in my life or did it too fast, I would either get sick or I would get hurt. So this time I was going to ease back into the process. And I went to different parks and played and hooped it up all over Cleveland, all over Northeast Ohio, but I never really played in any intense pickup games. I watched, but I would basically play by myself. And I would work on the things that I was never good at. I never was a great shooter, so I worked on my shooting hundreds of times, playing around the world, around the basketball court, by myself, foul shots, three-pointers. I would work on my left-hand layups, my fadeaway shot, my hook shot, which is a very underrated shot, my hook shot with my left hand. I worked on my dribbling, both hands, strengthening both hands, going up and down the court. I was crossing it up, white shadow style. I was on fire, and I did this for about three months. And one day I went to my hometown and I was visiting my mother for Sunday dinner. And I said, before we have dinner, I'm going to go to the local park and I'm going to play some basketball. I'm almost in shape. I'm almost ready for my big debut. And I'm playing on this court and I'm shooting and I must have shot. It had to be 250 times. And as I was done practicing, I dropped the basketball and it rolled off the court. And I just walked over into the grass to pick it up and I bent over. And when I lifted up, it was as if someone had shot me. I fell to the ground. Snap. It was like a bullet had gone into my spine. And I thought, that's it. I'm a victim of a drive-by shooting. I've been shot. And I fell over. And I couldn't get up. I had fallen. And I couldn't get up. And I struggled there for a while. And I was trying to get my bearings and wonder what happened. But there was no one around me. No one attacked me. No one hurt me. No one hit me with a crowbar. There was no vengeful act from a, from a mob movie. And I thought, did I, did I just hurt my back? I'd never had that happen before. And I'm laying by myself in this park, barely anybody around, and I'm writhing in pain. And I try to get up. So I try to stand up at every time that big shot of pain would go into my back and I'd fall over again. Then I'd try to get up. Then I'd fall over again. This went on for 20 minutes. And now I started getting concerned because I didn't know how I was going to get home. I couldn't even make it back to my car. I tried crawling and my back hurt too much. It just made it worse. There was this one lady who walked by and she saw me and she came up to me and it started to rain. And she said, sir, are you okay? I said, I'm just a little bit injured and I'm just taking my time. Don't worry, ma'am. And she walked away. 
I wouldn't tell anybody. And I tried this for another hour and then the rain got harder and then it got harder. Now it's pouring rain. I'm laying on the ground and I can't get to my car. I don't know what to do. So I do what any person in their mid thirties who's visiting their mother would do. I called my mom and my mom, my poor mother drove to this park and she brought a like a stool. And she said, we're going to use the stool to try to get you up. Okay. And she brings the stool over. And every time I tried to get up, my back would go out and I fell over again. It got to a point where I said, we're going to have to call the ambulance. And so I did, I called 911 operator says, what's your emergency? And I said, I've fallen and I can't get up. I have a severe back injury from playing basketball by myself. She laughed a little bit on the phone. It wasn't funny. She laughed. Next thing you know, ambulance shows up. My mom says, I'll meet you at the hospital. They pick me up. They put me on this stretcher. They put me in the back of the ambulance. They give me laughing gas. I'm cracking up. I must have said something that I was training for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Everybody in the ambulance is laughing. I end up at the hospital and I'm going in and out of consciousness because they put me on laughing gas. And I I swear there was a moment where I was flying in the air and I had Air Jordans on my feet and I had a LeBron James jersey on my chest and I was about to slam the ball and then I got thrust back into consciousness and I'm laying on this hospital bed and the doctor said to me, what happened? I said, I don't know. Am I going to be able to walk again? And she laughed at me and she said, yes, you're going to be able to walk again. You just blew out your back. It happens to people all the time. I said, but isn't there a chance that I won't walk? She says, Sir, you're going to walk, but we're going to give you some morphine. I said, oh my God, morphine. Isn't that what they give soldiers who aren't going to make it? Isn't that what they give soldiers who are on their way out? Are you going to start reciting the Lord's prayer now? She said, no. And she puts puts some morphine into my body. And I'm so nervous about this that I have a panic attack while on morphine. And then she says, God, we got to get this guy some oxygen. So they give me some oxygen. I'm on morphine, having a panic attack in the hospital. And then the lady says to the nurse, get him a muscle relaxer. So they pump me full of muscle relaxers while I'm on morphine, having been on laughing gas. And all of a sudden, I just slump into this mush of a human being. The laughing subsides. They basically give me some painkillers, which I won't take because I'm afraid. And they somehow were able to get me onto a wheelchair. They wheeled me out into my car. I was sort of pushed by my mother back into the back seat like a crumpled mess, driven back home. And for a week, I laid in bed. It was hard to eat. It was hard to sleep. I had to crawl at night to get to the bathroom. It was humiliating. And it was enlightening, too, because I had never hurt myself like that. And I think about all the people who are in pain in their back, especially who, who lost the ability to really walk or something. And I, I thought about it in theory before, but I was able to taste it here. And I have such empathy for people who are struggling with that. And so I was so grateful when I started to recover. But every time now, even to this day, when I walk near a basketball court and someone says, Hey, Aaron, you want to hoop it up? I feel a cold chill go down the center of my back. Mm-hmm.